Welcome to our lecture online and now in this video the next several videos coming after this we're going to look at some very special properties on binomial distribution. So the first one we're going to talk about is what we call the expected value. So what's the expected value of a distribution? Now it turns out the expected value of a distribution which has kind of a normal curve to it which has like a what we call a symmetric curve to it you would expect the middle value to have the highest probability of occurrence and so therefore that becomes what we would call the expected value the expected value way to look at it would be the value that's most likely to occur so in this case the expected value of course has to do with the number of successes and so in this case you'd see that if you have eight trials the fourth one so for m equals 4 or 4 successes would be the most likely scenario in an equally distributed what we call binomial distribution. So in this case the answer would be 4 to be the most likely event occurring, the most likely outcome with 4 successes and you could then also say that the what we call expected value in this could, case would be 4. So in the case that the distribution is not symmetric you can see that's skewed more to the left so the the expected value would lie somewhere, somewhere more in the, this range right here. Now you'd say, well, isn't 2 the expected value here? Well, it turns out if you look at the value next to it, on either side, to the left and to the right, you can see that 3 it has a higher probability of occurrence than 1. So that means that 2 is not right in the middle, as you expect that the actual expected value is to be somewhere to the right of 2, somewhere between 2 and 3. Now, a nice handy way to find the expected value is simply to take the number of trials and multiply it times the probability of success. And that's the way we typically find in the binomial distribution what we call the expected value. Notice that we use the Greek letter mu to indicate expected value. So in the case where if n is equal to 8 and p is equal to 0 0.5, we then have mu is equal to 8 times 0 0.5 which is equal to 4, or 4.0 if you want to say that. And so you can see that that's indeed matching up with our graph that we have on this side. But what if, in the case, if n, the number of trials, is equal to 8, but the p is equal to just 0 0.3, what do we get? Well, here the expected value mu is equal to 8 times 0 0.3, which is equal to 2.4. Notice that, just as we predicted, it's actually a little bit to the right of 2. 2 is not the most likely value to occur but 2.4 is and so we expect that to be the we we then know that that's the expected value we expect that to be the expected value kind of interesting so anyway you can see how this is a very easy quick way to find the expected value and remember the expected value simply is the value most likely to occur in this case the number of successes and so in the number of successes in the case would be 4 if p is equal to 0.5 and it would be 2.4 if p is equal to 0.3. Of course, in a binomial distribution where you have an integer number of um, what we would call uh, trials, you would expect an integer number of successes, and of course 2.4 is not an integer number, but that's okay. We can see that in this case we would pick 2 as the most likely integer number to occur because 2 is closer to 2.4 than 3, and that's another way to look at it. So, the expected value, that's how we calculate it.